Welcome everyone, Rupp Arena. Late night game, midweek. Heck, they'd show up at four in the morning. Big Blue Nation to watch their number four Wildcats take on Arkansas. Reviewing the season, Kentucky started against Duke, got hammered by 34. And then they go on a 10-1 run. They lose the conference opener, but Coach Calipari's team rebounded by then going on a 10-game win streak. They move all the way up to number five in the country. Lose at the buzzer to LSU. Controversial ending. Rebound with a 17-point win over the number one ranked Tennessee Volunteers. Duke's on the ropes tonight. Tennessee could climb even higher in the polls. They're currently tied with LSU and Tennessee atop the SEC at 12 and 2. Mississippi State with an impressive win. They are 9 and 6 and just a game behind South Carolina and Ole Miss. Welcome everyone to Rut. Laura Rutledge joins us in a moment. Interesting to get an Arkansas team in here that can shoot from the outside. Offensive in college basketball right now. Kentucky only allowing 61 points a game in this league. Daniel Gafford has to be the guy tonight, Ravi. He's capable of doing it. If, the, if Arkansas can establish him around the rim, it will also open up Arkansas's three-point shooting, which has not been good. Think about this, though. Arkansas has won at LSU this year. They're capable of pulling it off in run. No doubt. All right, Laura Rutledge with more on the guys that are going to be guarding Gafford. One of them is missing. Yeah, that's right. Reed Travis, of course, sprained his knee a week ago. And at that time, they were optimistic he could return in a couple weeks. He did. Minutes on Saturday against Auburn had six points, seven rebounds, three blocks. He knows they even need more from him, saying, though, that you can't replace Reed with just one guy. Reed's that much of a beast. Nick Richards will be counted on. Keldon Johnson as well. All of these players know that in Reed's absence, they need to bring energy in all aspects of the game. And, guys, they actually think it could benefit some of them getting a little bit more time no to doubt. play without Reed. No doubt. Blessing in disguise. you got a 6'11 guy, Nick Richards, coming off the bench and of course they're starting EJ Montgomery at 610 while Reed recovers. Gafford and PJ Washington jump center and it's to Ashton Hagens to start for Kentucky in the home whites. Ravi Arkansas man-to-man -man defensive team that likes to scramble the game up with hot ball pressure. Early foul right away and that's called on Desi Sills. He's the guard for Arkansas Mike Anderson in the Arkansas sideline, eighth year. And a team that has uh, kind of struggled to find an offensive identity other than Gafford. Well, and you look at the three-point shooting numbers in conference play Arkansas, they are brutal. And that's just putting Daniel Gafford in a crowd for 40 minutes every time that he plays. E.J. Montgomery gets things started. The freshman out of Fort Pierce, Florida. Harris Sills, Isaiah Joe's a very good shooter, perhaps a little tired lately with his legs. He's been off from the outside. Gafford, a sophomore at 6'11". Here's Hero for three. That one's off, and E.J. Montgomery working on the offensive glass. He and Keldon Johnson corral. Arkansas cannot get into a jumping contest when that ball's on the glass in this ball game tonight. They better get body on body and hit first. Kentucky will punish you on the board. Keldon Johnson dump off. E.J. Montgomery in traffic, and it's out of bounds. So Coach Calipari could have used Nick Richards in the starting lineup. Why does he go with E.J. Montgomery? Well, I, I think he likes E.J. right now offensively and Nick defensively. And, and Nick's a guy that's going to give you a solid 8, 12 minutes. Lara's report was spot on. This could actually help Kentucky in their pursuit of a national championship. They need Reed Travis back though to play against Tennessee. His body on Grant Williams was spectacular in that matchup. Yeah, won't be back for this weekend's game. What a huge showdown Kentucky and Tennessee have. And that is a big body that is recovering on the sideline for Kentucky. Yeah, we were there last Tuesday, and it, it looked like it could have been worse. Yes, it you did. You know, when he got that knee goes in from the side angle, but... Uh, well, he is a brute on the box. Gafford hands it to Joe. His first shot halfway down. Offensive rebound. No good. And they continue to battle. Did Gafford step out of bounds? He did. But good work there by Arkansas. Gabe Asabuan on the bench. Here is where Keldon Johnson rolled into. 
Ray Travis's knee, and that's what caused him to go down. And I tell you, we were staring at him when he went down. Mm. He thought it was worse, just based on his expressions and the words he was using. Two important knee injuries in college ball right now, right? Right. Zion Williamson and Reed Travis, two teams that will be odds-on favorite to cut down the nets in Minneapolis. And a chance for Kentucky to climb in those rankings. Virginia Tech ended up beating wow. the new Blue Devils tonight as Ashton Higgins knocks down a three. And his improved outside shooting, another factor for Kentucky as the season winds down. Yeah, because who do you double off of now? Big one for Isaiah Joe needed it. Otherwise, a five-zip lead could have grown even higher. And Isaiah Joe can flat out shoot that ball. Watching play last year a lot in Arkansas High School State Tournament. Just a pure stroke, about as good as we have in the freshman class in the country. 94th three-point field goal of the season for Isaiah Joe. We'll show you where that ranks SEC-wide, nationwide as well. No paint touch for Kentucky on that possession. Talking with John Calipari yesterday, he wants 40 to 45 paint touches per ball game. P.J. Washington, as confident a shooter as there is in the country. Another offensive rebound. Keldon Johnson, no good, fights for it again. Good pass, Higgins, another extra pass inside, and P.J. Montgomery couldn't hold on to it. Ravi, extra passes result in turnovers. That was not the right pass that time by P.J. Washington. That ball needed to be shot. Back cut will stay with Arkansas. E.J. Washington has worked his way into the National Player of the Year conversation. Well, I, I expect Zion Williamson is going to win it, but certainly P.J. is going to be right there in that next group of three or four guys in terms of votes. This kid played over the last eight weeks as good as anybody in college ball, Ravi. He is a monster on that left block. He's knocking down 50% of his threes. He's in a, a between-the-pipes driver. He scores in three or four different ways. Hard to guard, P.J. Washington. 56% from the field. He's averaged 21 points over his last dozen games. He's been outstanding as Gafford throws one up and in. So Daniel Gafford ties this game up early. Gafford going towards the rim, four feet and in. He's going to make about 80% of his shots. Outside of that area, it drops about 32%. P.J. Montgomery, after hitting that first shot out of the game, Nick Richards in. Arkansas with good ball pressure so far to start this game defensively. And Richards, because of his size, trying to seal off Gafford, who gets called for the foul. And John Calipari has 10 fouls to use at his five position. Exactly. Mike Anderson has five with Gafford. That's why you'll see your paint touches, just to see if they can continue to get Gafford into that foul trouble. Keldon Johnson, a little baseline runner. That's no good. And how about P.J. Washington with a steal and a flush? Yeah, he does it all, doesn't he? Such quick hands by P.J. Washington defensively. Good job by Hero on that last possession not to shoot a bad pass. Joe open for three, another one in and out, and that one out of bounds. All right, we'll take a timeout. We're at Rupp Arena, Big Blue Nation, loving what P.J. Washington's been able to do. Well, he's in the best physical condition of his basketball life, so his thinking doesn't get clouded. He can react and make plays. P.J. Washington, hard to guard. P.J. in the end of the game, that's who he should be the whole game. Why aren't you getting 35 and 20? It's his energy, his anticipation, his aggressiveness. I waited a year and a half for him to play this way. What makes me happy is when I'm hearing people call me and say, Cal, he's the most improved guy in the country. Well, you take a look at the SEC Player of the Year race. Grant Williams 
was the co-player of the year last year. A lot of people figured he would be the front runner again. He's tailed off a little bit, and perhaps there's something going on with Grant Williams physically. Tremont Waters, uh, his case, probably took a step back because Javante Smart was so great this week. P.J. Washington mentioned his last 10 games, how good he's been. You talked about the body being so in shape. He is so confident right now. Absolutely, and you look at that matchup coming up Saturday against Tennessee. Something's going to have to change for Tennessee defensively because of P.J. Washington, because time and time again, this guy oscillated one-on-one -on, -one on the block. So is Tennessee going to drop down and scrape down with a guard? Are they going to double over with a big? Something's going to have to happen, because you have to put P.J. Washington in a crowd. You can make a strong argument for all three of those guys, Ravi, for SEC yeah. Player of the Year. This guy right now would get my vote with two weeks to go. And he is, uh, at times he's a big guard, at times he's a big physical power forward guy. It's a, a, a tough matchup. Seven foot three wingspan out of Dallas, Texas. Spoke to him during the shoot around earlier. It was his mom who actually taught him how to shoot, and his form has never changed. The only thing that's changed on him is his body. A lot thinner, a lot stronger. Hagen set play, and it. Uh, wasn't executed so that Hero could launch a three. Now he can. He's going to get a foul underneath after the basket. Guys, Coach Cal's message in the Kentucky huddle was all about one-handed rebounds. If you're in his practices, all he's saying all the time is rebound with two hands. He said they've had a few one-handed rebounds. That's not how we need to be playing, according to Coach Cal. Also, they're really identifying Isaiah Joe for Arkansas as somebody who they cannot allow to have open shots. He missed that open three a few minutes ago, but he said the fact that he even was able to take it is a failure for us. We've got to keep him locked up. Yeah, absolutely. Hope is not a plan. And hoping he misses is not a good defensive plan. Double Gafford on the low block touch, and don't let Isaiah Joe shoot threes. You do those two things for Kentucky tonight, Arkansas is going to have a hard time winning. One of my favorite Jimmy isms. Hope is not a plan. <laughs> hey, there it is. Keep that one. There's a three. Joe again. And remember, his two misses were halfway down. He's kept Arkansas right in this thing. 10-8. Rather, he can make guarded shots because he's long at 6-5. Who are they going to get here? If that's on Gafford, that's his second. Got a break on Adriel Bailey. The last possession, Kentucky got two paint touches within the possession and a wide open three. And that's how you get your three point shooting going for both ball clubs tonight. Jalen Harris in there at the top, currently guarding Higgins. Got to go to a double of hero. Washington hard to the rack, he gets fouled. And this one may be on Gafford, and it will be his second if it is, and they do call it on Daniel Gafford. So at the 14-18 mark of the first half, Gafford picks up his second foul. A big call and a, a drive of conviction, wasn't it, by P.J. Washington? I mean, he saw a little bit of a crack and a gap, and he, he attacked. And in two bounces and three big steps, he goes right at the front of the rim and right by Gafford. And Gafford far and away the presence that Arkansas needs in this game. Nearly a double double at 16 and a half and almost nine rebounds a game and he's got 54 blocks. And you just take a look at the floor right now and it is a major height advantage for Kentucky. Yes. Look at P.J. Washington this year, 343 plays in half-court offense, 365 points off those plays, Ravi. That's top 8% in the country in terms of his efficiency in half-court. Good hustle there by Adriel Bailey as he bounced that off of a Kentucky player. It'll be Arkansas ball. Mention Harris, we were at the shoot-around today. I don't think that uh, Mike Anderson was particularly pleased with the effort he was getting. And down one end of the floor, when Anderson was down the other, it was number five who gathered everybody, just the red short sophomore, Harris, and he told him, we got to have energy. we got to have energy in a practice. we got to have energy in a game. And that's one of those things as a coach, you'd like to see a player take responsibility, lead that Absolutely. group. Absolutely. You know, guys complain about their playing time all the time, and I say, go watch the practice film. Coaches play guys they trust, and if we can't trust your body language, your voice, your work ethic in practice, how in the world do we think I'm going to trust you putting you in a ball game? And that was kind of the message of Mike Anderson today for a couple of his guys. I thought it was he was spot on when he said it. Changing the line. 
How about that? One of four Division One coaches with that many seasons and zero losing seasons. He's with an elite company, right? Yeah, he sure is. Roy Williams on that group. Now the list that he's on with regards to this is uh, all Hall of Fame. And he's bordering on the 500 there, but Roy, Tom, Mark Few with Gonzaga. And then it's Mike Anderson. That'd be a great uh, quickie quiz, and I'd like to come up with three of the four. Right, yeah. And those top three are all capable of winning the national championship this year. Gon Gonzaga certainly is. My problem with them, Ravi, they're going to the last two months without playing a team that's going to be in the NCAA tournament. A team like Kentucky's played 11 or 12 games against that type of competition. Nick Richards, that big step, got him out of bounds. And right now, Coach Calipari, Laura talked about it earlier, Nick Richards struggling a little bit. E.J. Montgomery struggling early. And this is where the Reed Travis injury, you can kind of feel it. Yes. If you're Arkansas right now without Gafford, you have to score now off of driving the ball and knocking down jump shots. Like that from Isaiah Just Joe. Like that. Well, step back three over another three-point shooter in Hero. And Arkansas on the road up by two. Isaiah Joe is putting it on Kentucky right now as a shooter. Again, he's a long kid that can make guarded threes. Manuel quickly in, Hagens to the bench, and there's a foul. Whistle on Adriel Bailey. Guys, we've seen Isaiah Joe money from three so far, as you mentioned, giving Arkansas the lead in this game. This time last year, he's playing in high school. And I asked him if he'd be at all concerned about the atmosphere and environment here in Kentucky. He said he's really good about keeping his nerves under control. He knew it would be loud. He was prepared for that and said he was just going to block out all the noise. He's done a great job of doing that so far as a young guy. Fourth all-time now, single season, Arkansas three-point shooting. He's on pace for 110, which puts him into elite. SEC country, not just Arkansas country. That pass deflected. And the ball on the ground. It's Joe who went down to get it. And sloppy start for the Wildcats. Maybe Arkansas is playing harder. They are doing an outstanding job. Arkansas is of guarding the ball with pressure so far the first eight minutes. Haley got banged. He threw it up. No foul called on Washington. Think about Arkansas, you look at their season, they've been in just about every game. They've lost a lot of them, but they've been very close down the uh, stretch of the second half in most of them. Yeah, the only one they got knocked out early was at Auburn down 22 to one. Isaiah Joe, tough pass inside and a real hard shot for Reggie Chaney, had no chance to make that. Yeah, you don't have to shoot it just because you get the ball in front of the rim. Look at Joe with a pick, is he gonna come down? With a two-on-one, he throws the out Help for the flush, and that worked well with Reggie Cheney. It's an energy game. John Calipari told his guys today at 2.30, if you don't bring your energy in this ball game, we're in trouble. The team with the most energy right now is on the other end of the floor. It's the Arkansas Razorbacks from Fayetteville. They've been hot defensively, Ravi Arkansas has, with extreme ball pressure and not allowing Kentucky to get into the paint. Calipari's got an interesting timeout right now in his hands. is brought to you by Zaxby's chicken fingers buffalo wings salads for Jimmy Dykes he's a <laughs> salad guy you find a location at zaxby's.com body is a temple for Dykes 15 11 Arkansas they have scored seven points off of five Kentucky turnovers I am a salad guy and uh, Isaiah Joe is he's seen a big basket right now in rough he got off early in terms of getting open looks and Kentucky better lock in on this kid because he's one of the best if not the best three-point shooters in this year's freshman class in the country. Three out of four already. He's the only guy, Ravi. Everybody else for Arkansas in conference play, their three-point percentage is down like 25%, 29%, 28%, and 12%. Right. Isaiah Joe's the one guy you've got to caboose and chase all over the floor. Kentucky fans know about what Jamal Murray did back in 15-16. An SEC freshman record 113 threes. The Division I record, not a surprise. Steph Curry 122 at Davidson. The other name that's not on that list, Scotty Thurman. He holds the Arkansas record for three-point field goals in a season. That was back in 94-95 with 102. Isaiah Joe's on pace for 110. And what a uh, Saturday Scotty Thurman and the rest of that 94 national championship team are going to have as they celebrate that squad in Fayetteville. Yeah, that'll be a, a pack Bud Walton that afternoon. Scotty Thurman, Corliss Williams, and Corey Beck. What a phenomenal team that was. Co Corey Beck is good of a physical point guard 
that we've seen in college basketball in the last 20 or 25 years. He was a grown man at that point guard spot. Yeah. There's a steal, another sloppy pass, and more frustration for Calipari. Tough shot, good defense that time by P.J. Washington, as they did not force a foul. out of the game mainly because of his inability to guard Isaiah Joe now of course Isaiah Joe also on the bench at this point but he had told Tyler if if he gets one more open look I'm taking you out of the game that ends up happening another thing too from an offensive standpoint for Kentucky coach Cal telling him they've got to push the ball down the court throw it ahead find somebody open ahead of you to get them all moving that way and also post to PJ now yeah, we'll see about some fast break opportunities off of misses you got Gafford and Isaiah Joe both on the bench now for Arkansas. Gafford in foul trouble, and Joe just getting a breather. 15-11, Razorbacks. Bad pass again, too many turnovers for Kentucky. Kentucky ran no offense on that possession. Arkansas on their matchup, switching 1-1-3 zone, and Kentucky never knew it. Seven turnovers, Jones no good, EJ Montgomery clears, and here's that push Laura was talking about. Foul on Jones, you got Jamal Baker. Hey, tomorrow, the new number five team in the nation at seven now, Tennessee against Ole Miss. That's on the SEC Network. Seven Eastern time, six Central. You can watch it on the ESPN app from anywhere. Ole Miss has been playing really good basketball lately, and they have some huge games in Oxford, including that one, and then we'll see them next Tuesday when Kentucky goes there. There be a chance for Ole Miss to finish fourth in this yes. league, and that's huge in terms of the conference tournament and moving up your seating in the NCAA bracket. Those three guards for Ole Miss can cause you all kinds oh. of problems, man. They are fast. You've seen them in person. And Kermit's got them changing defenses right now. It is not easy. They got three point guards, basically. Yes, they do. Tyrese, terrific. Schuler can handle the ball. Yeah. They're a really Davis. tough team. Yes. They play fast and with energy, much like Arkansas's energy so far to start this game. Are you a look ahead, worry about trap game person, or are you just looking yes. at this as a, you are one of those? Yeah, yeah well, with a young team like Kentucky. And all the, see and, this and, weekend. And all the noise that's, that, yeah. that surrounds you when you play for the Wildcats. And that, that was John Calipari's message earlier today. Arkansas. How many, how many open looks have they had? Wide Randy? open. Wide open. Coach Calipari has gone to his bench continuously. Largest lead of the night for Arkansas. And the crowd's been pretty flat, too. 18-12. And they're doing this without Gafford. Think about that. They've grown the lead, Arkansas, with Gafford on the bench. And Joe recently, and another turnover. Nine turnovers now for Kentucky. Mike Anderson just keeping that offense open right now, allowing guys to drive. Oh, Jones got yeah. banged. They'll give him the bucket. And Mason Jones goes to the free throw line. Ravi, in a crazy way, Gafford going out of this ball game may have actually helped Arkansas the last five or six minutes because now the entire floor is opened up and you've got all five guys are now drive threats. Kentucky not staying in front of the ball, not rate, rotating over off the white line. And Mike Anderson has to love the start of his ball club on the road tonight. Who's playing harder? Team in the red? Absolutely they are. It's, it's amazing what happens when you're the team bringing that energy. Mason Jones, an 81% free throw shooter, misses that. Heroes back in the game. Waiting for somebody in white to show a little more energy. Nick Richards, another turnover for Kentucky. That's their ninth now. I think I said nine. That is their ninth. That three is blocked by Tyler Hero. Kentucky's got to go in transition. Keldon Johnson you won't travel, Teddy Valentine says. Since Gafford's second foul, who would have thought this? Arkansas yeah. has gone on an 8-1 run. Arkansas is quicker in this game at every position right now on the floor. And Quickly's a, a, a quick kid. Hagen's when he's on the floor is a quick kid. But overall, Arkansas is a quicker team at all five spots. And it's opened up a lot of driving lanes. Arkansas the more aggressive downhill team so far. Eldon Johnson is scoreless. He's 0 for 3 from the floor. If we were tracking paint touches, Arkansas is going to have the advantage probably 12 to about 6 right now in this game. 
Now Sabuin says, I'll try it. Probably shouldn't have. No. Way off. What you think and what you do sometimes need to be two different things. <laughs> he is a 5 of 23 now from three-point line. There's my point. Think before you shoot? Yes. P.J. Washington with a huge height advantage over Embry Simpson, who's covering him. Like Kentucky's allergic to the paint. They, have, they, they cannot get to the blue part of the floor. Three on the shot clock as Hero launches. High arcing three goes in. See if that sparks him a little bit. Tough one off the window, and Nick Richards clears it. Nick Richards the foul, and he'll go to the free throw line. For as good as Kentucky has been, their winning has been done primarily on the defensive side. But Tyler Heroes is as pure a three-point shooter as there is in the country. And they get a break with a late Shot clock three from Hero. Who picks Suey? Too many turnovers for Kentucky. Yeah, absolutely. Kentucky sloppy with the ball, careless with the ball, not strong with the ball. The Arkansas defense, Ravi's had a lot to do with it. They're, they're playing with hot hands and really quick feet. Kind of speeding Kentucky up in the half court. And uh, Kentucky's got their hands full right now. The energy, the fight level of Arkansas without Gaffer on the floor, very impressive. The other big part of this game, Arkansas has only turned it over one time in this game. You look at Kentucky, 10 turnovers already. They've only had 23 possessions. Kentucky has turned it over almost one out of every two possessions. Impossible to win ball games like that. Daniel Gafford of Arkansas told me earlier today, he said Kentucky is not going to expect us to be good in so many areas because he said, frankly, we haven't been. He said they're going to expect us to turn the ball over. They're not going to expect us to be the ones forcing the turnovers. He thought they could catch the Wildcats by surprise, guys. Oh, mm. Prophetic. Gafford's got a crystal ball. Prophetic. Must have ate at the uh, Kentucky Castle this morning. Yeah, and had some, had some uh, Dunkin' Donuts ice water to wash it down. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever he what had day. for breakfast, he knew something, because right now Arkansas is up by five or under eight. And the turnover ledger is so one-sided in favor of Arkansas, you never would have thought that. I mentioned Kentucky and all their wins. They've done it primarily with defense. Their field goal defense, their three-point field goal defense, no. they're forcing turnovers. All of those tonight tipping Arkansas's way. And that's been Arkansas's problem in their losses is turning the ball over at key times. And Mike's club has had one turnover in this game. And it's, a, it's, a, it's not the Nolan Richardson 40 minutes thing, but they do get you to turn the ball over. They do. And it has not been their full court pressure. It's just that half court right in Kentucky's grill. The Arkansas just keep the floor spread, run a five out offense, make Kentucky's bigs come out and drive when you get the opportunities. Isaiah Joe back in the game. There you go. There's a drive. Oh, tough shot in the lane by Reggie Cheney. Ravi, what happened? They, they, they drew the Kentucky big away from the floor, and they drove the big. Mike Anderson spreading the floor, doing a terrific job manufacturing minutes with Gafford on the bench. Cheney has six early, and it's a six-point Arkansas lead. Cannot get the ball in the paint. Our Kentucky cannot go by anybody in this game right now off the bench. Hero once again, step back. He's hot. Last two shots have found nothing but net. Tough shot by Hero. If you're Arkansas, you live with Kentucky taking hard two-point shots right now. Seals into traffic, into bodies, and they're going to get Montgomery. And it looked like it was one of those fouls where he brought his arm down. Yes. That's when the whistle blew. And that's, when you're in the restricted arc, you have to go straight up or it's an automatic call, and this is what Hero can do to you. Drive the pressure and step back to get away from it. Elevates up awfully quick for a kid that 
He's a full 6'5", not close to 6'6", six, six. surprising quickness with his offensive moves. A lot of talk, perhaps, Jimmy, that uh, Tyler Hero is a one and gunner. Mm. His stock keeps rising. There are teams in the NBA, just think about the style that the NBA plays that really could use a three-point shooter, and he has got as pure a stroke as anybody in the country yeah. when he's on. You are spot on, and he does so many things so well. Talking to scouts before the ball game, we're talking through all the analytics and all the numbers and, and all the things that you could know when you're at Kentucky Pro Day, and, and one of the scout made a great reference to me. He said, here's the bottom line. Can the dude play? At the bottom line, can the dude play? And Tyler Hero is a dude that can play. How much they paying that scout? <laughs> <laughs> He's keeping it simple, man. Exactly. Yeah. Kentucky just catch around the perimeter. Higgins baseline. Here's Keldon Johnson into the paint. He doesn't get it to go. Nick Richards had it. And it's Arkansas coming up with a 50-50 ball, and Hagens with a foul. Bodies untangling underneath that Arkansas basket, and it looks like Keldon Johnson a little slow to get up. But Keldon may have taken one on the gut, lost his uh, breath for a couple of seconds, but he'll stay in with 6.24 to go. And Arkansas still up 24-18 with Gafford spending most of this half on the bench with two fouls. Tough pass, good hands, an extra pass. They get time, 14 on the shot clock. Now Harris with three. Long one, way off, air ball. Well, the only good thing about that Arkansas possession is it wasn't a turnover. He took 30 seconds off the clock. He made Kentucky work a little bit defensively. He did not get a good look. But again, Arkansas only one turnover still in the first half. A yeah. huge part of this game. Gafford went out at the 14-18 mark. DJ Washington had good space, and he finally gets it, and he'll get the foul. Looked like Hero missed him initially, then he found him. Yeah, but who's the toughest guy, though, so far for Kentucky offensively has been Hero. Yeah. He's driven the pressure and stepped back off of it for, for a tough two. And that time, he was the one guy that said, I'm not going to accept this pressure. I'm going to get the ball to the paint and make something good happen. But it did take a seat on the bench. Remember, it sure he did. came out early. No, you, you've threatened that with me before, and we, we've been working together. Yeah, Rutledge just sit next to me. <laughs> <laughs> upgrade. Upgrade on Jimmy's jet. <laughs> Ask me about his uh, shoulder braces and just get a little sore, he says, from time to time. Maybe from how quick he was turning them against Tennessee <laughs> time and time again when he went left shoulder for the right jump hook. No doubt. That thing was unstoppable it in that was. game against Tennessee. And Rick Barnes Club getting set for that showdown. They get another game before that as well. At Ole Miss, right? Yep. Tomorrow night? Yeah. Yep. And Tennessee better be ready. Ole Miss gets Tennessee and Kentucky Wednesday and Saturday. Boy, what a first half for Reggie Cheney. We've seen him inside. We've seen him outside. He's three of five and has eight of the 26. Yeah, he's a terrific defender. Mike Anderson just keeping the game simple. Keeping that floor spread, keeping good spacing, letting guys operate one-on-one. -on -one. Boy, Hero yeah. is feeling it. The last six for Kentucky from the field. The value of the guy that can go get his own. Hero is that guy right now for John Calipari. Nice back cut. Sills high wow. with that hook shot. And he gets it to go off the window, a shooting a high percentage. Arkansas, Desi Steel Sills with seven. A great back cut by Desi Sills because Hero was really out extending the pressure. Sills planted that outside foot and just like a rocket to the rim. Keldon Johnson wide open and short on that. Had a chance to drive it too. Three ball. Off the front of the iron. Missed from Jalen Harris. Cross it over. Find Hero. Cross it over. Good job by Arkansas to run to that three-point line and match quickly and Hero on the back side of the play. Manuel quickly steps into one. No good. P.J. Washington up and over. 
Isaiah Joe, and they're going to call a foul on P.J. Washington, and that is his second. Did nope. you see the foul? No, I did not. I don't see the replay. The opening possession, Arkansas did not box off. They didn't go hit a body. And Mike Anderson maybe has driven that point home. Isaiah Joe at 6-1. I think P.J. comes over his back. Do you? I mean, Isaiah Joe's only 6-5, and he's a slender kid, but he's inside position. A terrific back cut by Embry Simpson on the other possession. Stick that outside foot. P.J. Washington doesn't get there quick enough. Arkansas, the most aggressive team so far in Rupp tonight. Pat Banky, four of nine from three for the Fighting Scotty Thurmans. Arkansas 28, Kentucky 21. LSU is up big in that game, and the guys will have more of their highlights at the halftime report. But the schedule favors LSU. They're hammering A&M. They go to Alabama and Florida, and the Gators are playing better, and then home to Vanderbilt. Tough for Tennessee. They obviously get Kentucky. They're on the road at Ole Miss and at Auburn. And Kentucky, fairly favorable relative to Tennessee, but again, LSU's got the advantage they, they, here. They do have the advantage. And how impressive was their win over the weekend without Tremont Waters and Nas Reed was basically a no-show. Look at the SEC right now. The, the, the teams in the 1, 2, and 3 position, LSU, Kentucky, and Tennessee, 12 and 2, yep. just like the ACC. Virginia Duke and North Carolina going into tonight. Now Duke gets beat, but both the leagues are top heavy in those top three spots. That's crucial in the SEC and the ACC tournament when we talk about the possible semifinal matchup. Joe Venardi has moved Virginia ahead of Gonzaga. He has Virginia as the overall one. Look, a Duke loss. At some point, the Duke losses on the road or at home have got to take them yes. out of the top four. They've been living in the top four, yes. and they've lost some games here. Figure a chance for Kentucky, even though losing by nine, has a chance to move really into the top two or three if they can win tonight yeah. and then beat Tennessee. Rev, I've said it for three or four weeks now. I think the national champion comes out of the SEC or the ACC. I'm not so sure I should start talking about LSU being a team that could do it. I don't why why, why should we? doesn't get the respect. No, they, they don't. They've beaten Tennessee. They've beaten Kentucky. They did it without Waters, and Javante Smart looked terrific. Yep. They've got the, they've got the dudes that you have to have to cut down nets. Wow. Wow. Back in, and that's some noise. And how about Arkansas up by 11 at Rupp? And how about Mike Anderson going back with, with Gafford? He has the lead, and he trusts Gafford now to play with two fouls. A gamble for Mike Anderson. Will it pay off? You like that move? I, I would not have done it because they have the lead. They're playing well without him, yeah. and you want him in the second half. You know Kentucky's going to make a run. I'm not so sure Mike might not take him back out with a minute to go here. I would go offense for defense here and get yes. him out of the game. It doesn't look like Mike's doing that with 250 to go, but this is what Gafford can do and a good pass as well. Well, when you put him in a ball screen, talking about Gafford in the middle part of the floor, now it's a naked open ball screen action for him to rim run, and there's none, none better in college basketball than Gafford going from 20 feet to the rim off of a ball screen roll. El Dorado, Arkansas, the sophomore at 6'11", 253. He gets NBA scouts to drool, just given his athleticism, uh, he yes. can move. That dude will run all day. He can set ball screens and dive out of them. He can switch out and, on a guard in the NBA. A lot of folks thought he would come out last year. I think he's coming out this year and will be one of those top 15, 16 picks. Look at this game, Ravi, huh? Didn't see it coming. 10-point lead for the Razorbacks. One turnover for Arkansas in this first half. About as clean as you can play on the offensive end against a very good defensive team. Very active. Everybody in red moving yes. on the offensive end. Movement is hard to guard. Gafford, good block by Nick Richards at the rim. But a turnover. Arkansas buries a three, Isaiah Joe. If Cal didn't have his guys' attention at tip, he's going to have their attention at halftime. They are getting lit up on their own floor right now by a fast, quick team from Fayetteville. There's Calvin Johnson inside. Go, go, just do that every time to close out the half. Go right at Daniel Gafford if you're Kentucky. Kentucky 11 turnovers. Arkansas won. High Arthur no good. Gafford rebound. He loses it on the way up. He turned backwards and tried to play off balance quickly. That's a charge. That is a charge. Good call and a good 
job defensively by Gabe Asabuin. The fight and energy by Arkansas, very, very, very impressive. I mean, that was a fight and energy play to get their feet established in transition defense. Right there, the length of uh, Richards really bothered Gafford, and NBA scouts will take note of that, him playing through tall contact, which he'll have to do at the next level, but another open three, and Cal's pulling his hair out. <laughs> Great reaction. First, he was hoping that the Arkansas yeah. player stepped out, and what? then as soon as Joe got him, his hands went to his head. What I tell you about hope? <laughs> exactly. It's not a good plan. Not a good game it, plan. It was not in sophomore algebra for me. It never has been. Never will be. Twelve turnovers for Kentucky. Twelve to one. Crazy. They've got one of the best point guards in the country, and that guy, Ashton Higgins, and he's not responsible for all twelve, but he's your point guard. Ball hasn't been in his hands enough, and they have not had good interior passing. You think about no, no. the size advantage with PJ and Nick and EJ, and they have done very little in the paint to yep. the, the, the paint touch is two to one in favor of Arkansas in this first half. That's how you win games on the road, in the paint, on the glass, and at the free throw line. A lot of dribbling from Harris, but Isaiah Joe can't miss. That's a really good play. That's called off the knee, too. You dribble, bounce it off your knee right to a shooter. Isaiah Joe, 16 points for Arkansas. 12-point cushion, we're at a minute. Will the ball get in the paint for Kentucky? There's one paint touch. Richards, there you go, offensive rebound for Nick Richards. You notice that Gafford is back on the bench for Arkansas. All that paint touch did was put Arkansas in a defensive rotation, and you can't clean up the miss. Joe kicks to Asabuin. Free throw line jumper, and no, it doesn't go. Nick Richards being a little more aggressive on both ends of the floor. Go fast, go two for one. Keldon Johnson, though, get the foul mm. on Gabe Asabuin. Hey, tonight, following our game, the SEC Now team going to have all the hardwood highlights, analysis, post-game interviews from around the conference. No one covers the SEC like we do. You can also see it streaming live on the ESPN app. I've seen uh, this show. I've seen it with Jimmy Dykes on it. It's a good show if you're into the SEC basketball. You get everything. I'll be in there tomorrow night with this same suit, <laughs> same shirt. I will most likely change the tie. There's a routine I have on Wednesday. Fly to Charlotte. Yeah. Go eat a healthy salad at this uh, whole grain food store. Of course. Body with, wash temple. It, wash it down with water. Right. Go get my suit out. Steam iron it. Go for a jog and go to the studio. Why do we not go with like two suits? Why don't we, why don't we pack two? No, it, it's an efficient packing <laughs> and, and, and with a carry-on. <laughs> <laughs> Arkansas will use that timeout. 27 seconds to go and a 37 28 lead for Mike Anderson. Hey, one thing about Mike Anderson, too, you talk to him. I mean, the team obviously with their record struggles, and yet he's sort of the optimistic guy. He's not very outgoing, but he's optimistic. Like, look, you never know. They're kids. Yeah. We'll see what happens. We, we believe we've been in every game. It's an injury. Not, not one of those that get really down on the team. No, I, 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 I love what he said to us as he walked off earlier today. He said, I know this. We're going to fight tonight. And if you don't do that, you have no chance. If, if you do, you give yourself a chance. And that's what Arkansas has done so far. They have outfought Kentucky first 19 minutes. Cheney has been terrific in this game. A guy that's just not highly skilled, except the fact he's got a big Valentine. And he's made a lot of just effort plays. He's driven the ball against Kentucky's lead. He's set some grown man screens. He's popped out of them. He's shot a nice shot out of rhythm. And Arkansas doing a lot of good things and so impressive with their run. When Gafford went to the bench, Ravi went on a 20 to 10 run yeah. during that time frame. Cheney's played 10 minutes. He's got eight points. And he averages about three and a half. You know, take this all the way down. If you're Arkansas, do not allow Kentucky to get a momentum basket. At worst, go in up nine if you're Arkansas. Got to get Joe to touch the ball here. Yes, and you got to be worried about Kentucky coming with a trap and not let them run a play. They don't trap it, and Arkansas is going to get a shot. Well done. Gafford with one second to go on the clock. As well as you can do it, Ravi. As yeah. well as you can do it to close out a half. Boy, Mike Anderson has got to be tickled pink with the way things went for Arkansas. They lead it by 11. And how about the turnovers, Jimmy? You look at their last five games coming into this. They have more in this one than they did in four of those five games. Kentucky did not trap at the end. Surprised me, and Arkansas burned them because of it. 
Let's go to Laura. All right, Coach, with Daniel Gafford on the bench for much of that first half with a couple of fouls, how are the rest of your guys able to go on a run? Yeah, they're fighting. They're scratching. They're clawing, man. They're, they're playing their hearts out, playing with a lot of energy. Our defense has been really good. And, and the thing I like about it, we're sharing the basketball. Just the one turnover in this first half as well. How have you guys been able to play such clean basketball? Well, we've been turning over a lot in a lot of the games, so it's, it's been an emphasis. It's been a point of emphasis. We see it, Coach. Thanks. Thank you. They're listening to him, no yeah. doubt about it. 28 points for Kentucky, tied for the fewest in the first half. The previous 28 against Vanderbilt. Everything going right for the red, everything going wrong for Calipari. Peter and Pat in the studio. Thank you, Carl. Welcome back. 39-28 Arkansas. They took 12 more shots than Kentucky, and they only have one turnover. Coach Calipari just moments ago with Laura. Coach, what did you tell your guys at halftime? Uh, they want it more than we do, and now this is a good one for us to find out who we are. We're without Reed. Tyler gets hurt. Well, great. Let's see who we are. This is February. Let's see when you're in these environments, and we're at home, and they, they outplayed us. Is Tyler hurt? Um, he hurt his ankle. Got a little more information on Tyler Hero's injury. Kentucky calling it a right ankle strain. Let's make sure we specify that strain with a T, not a P. Tyler Hero trying to work through this and see if he can come back in this game. I'm told he is questionable to return. And guys, with his 12 points in the first half, they would sure like to get him back in this game. Well, without Tyler Hero in the first half, this would be a very different ball game. It would be way more in favor of Arkansas. As it is, 39-28, you look at the stat sheet, E.J. Montgomery, one field goal. P.J. Washington, one field goal. Keldon Johnson, one field goal. And Hero is actually going to start the second half. You know? Well, he played 17 minutes in the first half, and had he not played, Kentucky might be down 20. And Cal is spot on. Arkansas has been more desperate. They've played hard. They deserve to have this lead right now. We're getting ready to find out what Kentucky's made up once again. This is a young team. I set it off the top. Arkansas won at LSU. They're yeah. more than capable of winning the Rupp Arena. How important are the first few minutes for both teams? Arkansas not to lose the momentum and Kentucky to try to gain some. Yeah, I, I think for Arkansas to open up and not turn the ball over again to start the half is huge. Only one turnover by the Hogs in the first 20 minutes. Tough shot. That went over P.J. Washington. Wow, what a start. Sills buries a three. Bradbury, when you're not ready to play, and Kentucky wasn't ready to play, They've let Arkansas come in here, get open looks early, and now the team in red has the confidence in this building. Kentucky getting exactly what they should be getting put on them so far in this game. Duke already lost tonight. Kentucky in big time trouble. North Carolina losing to Syracuse the last few minutes. Boy, against the top five, they have been brutal. One and 17 all time on the road. And the only win came at Kentucky back in 1994. That's a foul. And one of the aspects you think about with a strain ankle is the inability to move on defense like you would as well. Yes, and maybe the inability to make those hard baseline cuts in the jump shots that he's been so good at the last three or four weeks, talking about Tyler Hero. Watch Arkansas drive the ball, get in the paint like they did in the first half. And, and reset the rules of how the game's going to be played. They are 15 of 33 from the field. They have been outstanding from three, making six of 11. There's another launch. Isaiah Joe, a little too long. Look at Hero go up and get it. They got a two on one. Higgins keeps it himself, and then he loses it. Does PJ Washington on the way to a dunk? Almost shocked that he got the ball after the Higgins turnover. Sills, Bam. money, back-to-back -back threes for Sills. A 15-point lead for Arkansas. And it all started with Daniel Gafford getting the ball out of a hard double team by Kentucky. He got the ball out to Osaboyan, who found the shooter on the weak side. What a start to the half by the Arkansas Razorbacks, just like they started the first half. Higgins penetrating. He got fouled there. And Jalen Harris knew it right away. Kentucky out of sync. Tyler Hero, the best defensive rebounder Kentucky has, starts the break and then an easy one, a gimme. Maybe a little bit of a play on the ball from behind. There's what I'm talking about. Gafford got the ball out of a hard double team, 
to the weak side of the floor. The backside bomb has Arkansas up by 15. Keldon, hard drive over Gafford, and that's a good one. Keldon Johnson has started the second half, Ravi, playing bully ball. He's going right at Arkansas on the inside. He's got seven. He's barking on defense as well. Got to figure he and Washington have got to assert themselves offensively. Sills again. That one's off. The battle goes to Kentucky. Hagens threw it up. He's going to get fouled. And it will be Ashton Hagens who goes to the free throw line. Talk about Kelvin Johnson playing bully ball tonight. In the second half, he's not shooting 15-foot jump shots. He's taking that thing towards the rim and trying to find contact. This is a physical kid at that small forward position. Arkansas, not a physical team overall. And Kelvin Johnson trying to do work right now in the paint. And how uncharacteristic it is for a guy like Keldon Johnson to go one of seven in any game that he plays. That was his first half, one of seven. Yeah. Just not in rhythm, not, not ready to play is the bottom line. Kentucky not ready to play in this game tonight. You know Arkansas at five and nine, you're facing a desperate Razorback team with a desperate energy so far. They have lost five games in a row, uh -huh. Arkansas, including a thrashing to Auburn. Crowd now into it like the team. And a 45-34 advantage for Arkansas. If you're Arkansas, use the shot clock. Make Kentucky work. Drive the ball. Don't settle for hard jump shots. That was a hard jump shot. Why settle for that? Keldon Johnson follows his own shot. No foul. Good job by Gafford playing with two. A great job by Gafford to go straight up and meet the contact that Keldon Johnson was trying to find. Hero from behind with a steal. Here he goes for the flush. Talked about how important these first four minutes were going to be, and even though it's still a nine-point deficit, you feel the momentum shifting. Yeah, just in the last 90 seconds, and it's been Kentucky's defensive pressure that got going. I think Tyler Hero is Kentucky's best overall defender. Does he struggle at times guarding the ball? Yes, but the entire Kentucky team does. Hero with a bad ankle, but a bad jam to get Kentucky momentum. Tyler Hero, 10.06 p.m. He came out of the half. Laura found out that he had a right ankle strain with a T, not a sprain. And the ankle looks okay. Maybe a lot of adrenaline flowing through that body. What I like about Hero, he has a gambler's mentality, offensively and defensively. That was a gamble play that paid off, coming from behind with hot hands. And you never question the heart and the fight and the toughness. I don't anyways, from 14 and white. Now he's the only guy that is above his average. Travis isn't playing. Hagens has got five so far. P.J. Washington has been held in check. Only one of three from the field with just four points. Arkansas head coach Mike Anderson thinks this is a pivotal moment in the game. He said, we have let them back in. We could not do this, but we've done it. He said, where was that fight that we saw in the first half? Remember at halftime, that's how he was praising his team, talking about how scrappy they were. He wants more of that now. Mike Anderson is spot on. This is the most critical time in this game. Arkansas can't turn it over. they got to continue to drive the ball and be the aggressor. Gafford setting up camp down low. Instead, it's Isaiah Joe with one on the shot clock. They fire away. It goes in and out. And P.J. Washington clears. Get it to the other side of the floor. Well done in transition. Hero, great pass. How about Gafford with another block at the rim? You cannot have two better individual plays than Gafford's made defensively at the rim, Ravi. No way. No foul. Keldon Johnson, and he'll get fouled, and he'll go to the free throw line. 
Daniel Gafford defensively has made two. This is what a future pro looks like, plays defensively. Right in front of the rim, watch Gafford. Moves his feet, gets his feet under his... Welcome back to Rupp Arena. How about uh, some Kentucky royalty? Kenny Skywalker coming out here to be introduced to the crowd in the Kentucky Hall of Fame. And we go from uh, Skywalker to the sky. Are we bringing out the jet? Yeah, this is the SC... ...has one or two seeds. And then I'm right behind them in business. I think LSU is going to be there. I think Mississippi State's going to play their way up into business class and have a good solid three, four, five seed at the back of the plane, but in solid position. Auburn, Ole Miss, Florida, and Alabama with a win tonight. They go from the standby list to on the jet and South Carolina now on the standby list. So eight teams in good position out of the SEC to receive a, a bid in that NCAA tournament. How about you with LSU? Lenardi's got him as a four seed. How are they not in first class? Well, first class is there's only eight seats up there, Ravi, and those yeah. are for the one and two seeds. There's nothing wrong with being in business class. That's where I sit most of the time. I can see you up there in first class. Every once in a while, you give me a wave. It's because the national you're, polls you're, don't give LSU the credit. You can do it. You're the yeah. SEC guy. They I, beat Tennessee and Kentucky. They did, but they, they've also had the losses that right now aren't worthy of a one or two seed in first class. You're not only the pilot, see. you own the jet. That's track and change. I could change him right now if you keep talking. I may. I, I like that. Yeah, he got hit. Yeah, he did. Gimpy on that left leg of his. Yeah. You have to see the contact. I don't know if it was a knee to the thigh or a knee to the knee. Well, there's some pain there. On the right side of the screen, he comes out to set a sprint out ball screen. Watch right here as he comes down on it. Oh, Ooh, the ankle. Yeah, out the ankle. Back, yep. yep. They played well without him the first half, Ravi. He's going in and hopefully get that take and come back for them. 45, 36, 15, 08 to go. I say a Jill free throw line. He was so hot in the first half. And he can't get that to go. We're going to get a foul on the floor against Kentucky. Kentucky is punishing Arkansas on the glass. They, they, they've doubled them up. But Arkansas is staying in it by not turning the ball over. The, so the possession battle is in favor of the Razorbacks. Tough call there. Looked like a 50-50 ball. Yeah, they barely went to the ground. They called it on Johnson. Arkansas spread the floor, run a five-out offense, cut and drive like you did the first half. You will get a good look. Still 14 on the shot clock. Plenty of time for Arkansas. Defense has been turned up. Joe knocks Man. down a three. Ooh, there's ice in those veins. Ravi, the one guy in late clock you can't let run to a catch position is Isaiah Joe. Kentucky falls asleep. Number one makes him pay. Gafford comes back to the bench. Pat Bradley in our studios has now just been tied with that three-pointer wow. from Isaiah Joe. As far as Arkansas three-point shots go. Tyler Hero keeping Kentucky in it. I'll put Tyler Hero and Isaiah Joe in the freshman class up with anybody in the country in terms of shooters for this year's first-year guys. Good three-point shooting you? contest. Absolutely, yes. I'd watch that. Foul here underneath on E.J. Montgomery. So that three from Joe ties Pat Bradley third most threes. There's that release by Tyler Hero that is, it's just picture perfect and he shoots it the same way every time. If I go back to the fact that Isaiah Joe in late clock situation sprinted to a catch three, Kentucky just still not on their toes enough. Good switch by here yes. to make sure Joe didn't get open that time. Sills and Joe, the only two guys with three pointers for Arkansas. Tough shot, loose ball. Find the other side of the floor. Hero wants another one. He got another one. Tyler Hero's got two. That's why you go to the other side of the floor, Ravi, in transition. 
His fourth 20-point game of the season. How often do you see a player either be sick or be hurt and come up with one of their best performances of the season? Oh, wow. a silencer from Jones, Mason Jones. And the building was exploding, and Mason Jones with no hesitation. Arkansas now looks like they're in the... Now they're in man-to-man. -man. Sometimes they kind of throw a 1-3-1 one, one look at you, but they're still going to match man. Good curl by Johnson. Matander falls to Kelvin Johnson. He can curl either side of the floor and finish with either hand off those curls. Can Kentucky get stops? Kelvin Johnson's got nine. into a side ball screen. Hagan's got lucky. Put it right in front of himself, but Isaiah Joe was there to deflect it. Isaiah Joe with 12.06 on the clock will go to the bench and get a break before the under-12 timeout. Embry Simpson back in the game. We haven't seen P.J. on that left block turning left shoulder for a right jump hook. And that's the money shot for Kentucky when things get tight. There he goes. Hi, Arthur. He'll go to the free throw line. Well, that's not a bad money play either. Putting him between the pipes going downhill. Man, what a ball game in Rupp and some outstanding shooting from guards. The transition pushed by Kentucky so well done. Get it to the other side of the floor. Find the opposite third. Good things will happen. Hagen's to Hero. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Hero sprinted to the catch position and Hagen found him quickly. But the answer for Arkansas has been time and time again. This time it's Mason Jones, a little bit jab step, gets separation, bam, bucket. Arkansas with the lead. Daniel, Ga Daniel Gafford for Arkansas looked like he had a major issue on this injury. I am told by the Arkansas athletic training staff that he is going to be able to come back in the game, just rolled his ankle. They were able to go in the locker room and get that taped up so he is ready to return. Great news for Arkansas as he's certainly a big... Whoa. I am so mad at you guys. I, I'm trying to do Whoa. an injury. <laughs> Multitasking <laughs> run. <laughs> See, here's the thing. When you think you're off camera, you can eat ice cream right. and, and do whatever you want. I'm so mad. I'm running That's away. That's producer, director, wow. tag team. Rut with the rough ice cream. <laughs> Rut with rough ice cream. The ice cream is really good, by the way. It is? We wouldn't know. Not true. Dyke's buried one. <laughs> Shocking, too, Laura. Jimmy wouldn't eat the cone. <laughs> hey, uh, Dave England with a, with a tape job on Daniel Gafford. Dave England, Ravi, who's been the Arkansas trainer on that bench for 36 years. So long that he taped my ankles a long time ago. Wasted a lot of tape, by the way. But he's retiring in this position after this season. Will be the director of sports medicine. No, no one on the Arkansas campus is thought more highly of than Dave England. He is a beautiful person celebrating a, a great career great at Arkansas. For yes. Great for him. He yep. had a great line today about your ankle. He said, well, I used a lot of tape, scotch tape. <laughs> <laughs> I got my ankles taped if everybody else had theirs done first. If, right. if he had time for me, okay, Jimmy. Hop up here. <laughs> Pretty good golfer. Yeah, terrific guy, Dave England. PJ, Washington missed the first of two. I got bit by a brown recluse spider once on my ankle. Yeah. They thought it was, my, it thought it was an ankle strain. The staff did. They had me doing toe raises for four days. <laughs> it wasn't Dave England. It was not him. No. <laughs> I, I recovered. <laughs> All right, six-point game. Big Blue Nation on its feet. Arkansas still only two turnovers in this game. You cannot play a cleaner game on the road than the Hogs have so far. Jones with three on the shot clock. Forces one up. In and out. And Nick Richards the rebound. Chance to cut it even further. Still have not seen P.J. on that block. Richards in the ball game. Right, there you go. Go to work, 25. No good, Nick Richards. Yes, a second effort. That's the type of production John Calipari yes. demands from Nick Richards. 
four points. Ravi, the value of getting the ball softly on the rim by P.J. Washington allows Nick Richards to come in. Get the ball to the paint, great things will happen. Now Arkansas has got to get back to getting paint touches. They were so good in the first half. Again, four on the shot clock. No shot there, and Kentucky's defense a difference maker. Hero, hard to the rack, it's blocked from behind, but a foul gets called on Adriel Bailey. How aggressive was Tyler Hero going to the hole? Tyler Hero has matched the fight level of Arkansas in this game. There's the value of a soft shot, a jump hook for Nick Richards to clean up. And look at Tyler Hero drive that ball on an ankle that's probably 60, 70 percent, but his heart is still at 100 percent. This kid is a fighter. Free throw shooter, Tyler Hero. First one over the front of the rim and good. Here come the reserves, including Daniel Gafford. What a job Kentucky has done taking care of the basketball in the second half. After 12 first half turnovers, they got a donut up there in the second half. That first half was ridiculous by Kentucky. They turned it over every imaginable way. Man, listen to this crowd. They're down by two, but it feels like they're up by six, especially at home. Look at Hero all the way at the half court play in defense. Tough runner, no good. And when you know it, Hero came up with a rebound. Arkansas is taking a lot of hard shots now, Ravi, in this second half. Nick Richards short. Mike Anderson hauling the spread. Spread this thing out. But you can't spread and stand. You got to spread and move. The ball has to be hot, and the player movement has to be hot right now for Arkansas. We're going to get steps. Double team by Nick Richards and P.J. Washington on Reggie Chaney. Led to the turnover. Yeah, Chaney caught the ball in a bad spot. He behind the backboard, really nowhere to go with it. Jalen put him in a bad spot by kind of overdriving that time. Well, you're right, Arkansas up two, but it feels like Kentucky's up six or eight. The building has changed in the last three or four minutes because of 14 in white. Heroic effort for a guy with a uh, strain on that right ankle. We learned about at halftime. Goes to the bench with 22 points on seven of eight shooting from the field. Don't you go back to the block if you're Kentucky right now with Richards and P.J.? I mean, I would get them touch after touch after touch. Hagen's lost it. Still tough pass. Try to thread a needle through two white jerseys. Keldon Johnson, did he just lose it? Yes, yeah. he did. He lost it. Just going too fast without a plan. Now I like his I like his thought in trying to turn this game into a bully ball, but that time he just bullied himself right into Kentucky's 14th turnover. Where is Arkansas's offense? Is it Daniel Gafford in the post? Can they get him three foot and down? Can they open up a driving lane? Can they get Isaiah Joe loose for a three? It feels like a must possession for Arkansas to score. Nick Richards doing a good job on Gafford, not letting him seal him off. One on the shot clock. They won't get a shot off. The Kentucky defense has been the difference in the second half. Five turnovers for the Razorbacks after one in the first half. As much movement as Arkansas had in the first half, now they're stagnant. They're guarding themselves. Not only is Kentucky putting pressure on them, but Arkansas is putting pressure on themselves by guarding themselves by not moving. Trying to will the number four team in the country into another SEC win and set up a huge battle in Knoxville. There you go. That's that left block, left shoulder jump hook I've been asking for. Tied at 51. Kentucky all the way back after trailing by 11 at the break.
You would think Gafford would be a target for Arkansas to get him the touch. Smothering Joe, jump ball, Kentucky basketball. It is amazing what the intensity on this defensive side has done for the Wildcats. Big Blue Nation got its team back tied 51. Coach, what did you tell your guys at halftime? Uh, they want it more than we do. And now this is a good one for us to find out who we are. Well, without Reed, Tyler gets hurt. Well, great. Let's see who we are. This is February. Let's see when you're in these environments. And we're at home. And they, they outplayed us. Is Tyler hurt? Uh, he hurt his ankle. Well, the ankle's better. We take a look at the All-State good hands play. And obviously that ankle was something they were concerned about during the half. But he came out for the second half, bounced on that right ankle, and then showed all sorts of bounce when it came to the game, burying threes and bringing the Wildcats back. Ravi, the kid's heart is a long way from his ankle. This kid is a fighter. I trust his fight, his try level, his swagger as much as anybody in college mall, not, not limited to the freshman class. And that thing's going to be sore tomorrow, but he understands the importance of trying to keep Kentucky in this SEC race and a chance for a one seed in that NCAA tournament. Something to watch right here. Coach Cal just talking to his Kentucky huddle, trying to find ways to diagram plays to get P.J. Washington the ball in the post. Also taking extra time to coach up Nick Richards in those situations to tell, take the help away. And of course, remember, Reed Travis being out with the injury, Nick Richards being asked to step up, as well as E.J. Montgomery. But also some of that learning has to happen in-game, guys. Well, Coach Cal challenges his team, so let's see what we're made of here at home. And that's the same for Richards. This is a huge opportunity for Richards and E.J. Montgomery, and they're going to get Travis back. Five on the shot clock for Johnson. Kick to P.J. No, Nick Richards had it, and they're going to call that foul on the floor on Gafford, who affected Richards when he went up by getting his legs, but that's the third foul on Daniel Gafford. Mike Anderson does not agree with the call. I love Kentucky's offense that time, Ravi. I counted three paint touches on one possession. Got Washington a clean three from the far corner. That's where the game's decided, I'm telling you. Who wins the paint touch battle in a ball game? 90% of the time, check off. That's who's going to win the thing. Sixth team foul for the Razorbacks. Post up, left block. There's Hero. Knocks Man. down another one. Have a night, Tyler Hero. You might not want to leave him. If you're Arkansas, you know what I'm saying? I hear you. Eight of nine from the floor, a season high 25. It all started, though, with the ball getting to the painted part of the floor for Kentucky. If you can't guard the ball, you can't guard the three. Plain and simple. Oh, they're going to get a foul right in front of the official on Ashton Higgins. Mike Nance with a call with three on the shot clock. The paint touch, the kick out. You cannot come down off of Hero. I don't care what else is going on the floor. If you're Arkansas, you caboose, you tag, and you stick with 14 and white the remaining 634 of this game. To his credit, even on a bad ankle, he does a great job of getting open. Yes. After his passes, he moves to an open spot. Yes. He took 28 shots from the baseline at one point and made 27. I counted all of them. And he's taking it into the game with him. I talked about the other day the work ethic that great shooters have. I think of Fletcher McGee at Wofford. He goes into the gym at night with the lights off and shoots just by the lights of the exit sign mm -hmm. to give him a feel for the ball and, and a better feel for the rim. Why he's one of the best shooters in college ball. Good pass to Gafford down low. Bam. Richards trying to go up to block it, but Gafford's That's threw it down quick. That is Arkansas's anchor now with six minutes to go. Arkansas can still win the game if Gafford continues to establish himself three or four feet in the front of the rim. Now this should be money. Richards gets fouled. 
But P.J. Washington unselfish, finding the big fella. On, on the other end, Ravi, Gafford is pretty clever now. You get on the high side, and that's what uh, Richards made a mistake of letting Gafford walk him up, and you just cleared out and throw it to number 10, who can go get bad passes. And he has got to stay in this ball game offensively, Gafford does. He has to post, repost, and continue to fight Kentucky on the inside. Now, did our producer just call you Jay Z? He did call me Jay Z. So you went from country <laughs> to, to hip hop? Yeah, I, I've got a lot of. I can go a lot of different directions on you. I didn't. Is that a nickname? No, I, I, this is the first time I've been called JD. I've been called Jimmy Joe, and now I've been called Jay Z. Jay Z in the house. <laughs> Nick Richards gets the friendly roll in his house. <laughs> oh man. Kentucky the more aggressor, and it shows in those free throw numbers in the second half. They've been there 10 times to Arkansas zero. Gafford's got four fouls. But you, yeah, but you're, yes. Play through him if you're Arkansas. Make Kentucky respond to a Daniel Gafford touch. Screen for Gafford. Let Gafford be a back screener for a shooter. There are ways to get Gafford involved. Isaiah Joe was so big in the first half was the drive and I think E.J. Montgomery may have affected it. E.J. Montgomery on the baseline. It's only the sixth foul on Kentucky, but fourth foul on E.J. Montgomery. Yep. Kentucky's been able to defend without fouling because Arkansas cannot drive the ball on. Arkansas against the Kentucky team this half is keeping their hips squared on that ball. We're getting some very productive, valuable minutes from Nick Richards in this game. Uh huh. And get Gaffer on that block and let him go to work. Reverse the ball. Gaffer fell. Eight on the shot clock. Good ball fake. Nick Richards sends it to the seats. Ravi, you got to shoot it for Mason Jones. You turned down an open clean two and actually a clean three and took it right into the traffic and the length of Nick Richards. Mistake. And Nick Richards just eats it up. Second block. He's having a very good game. Five seconds. Oh, Gafford follows as Richards went to block the shot from Sills. And there's value for Arkansas to get the ball on the, on the, on the rim softly because of the phenomenal quickness and the bounce of Daniel Gafford on the offensive glass. Keldon Johnson nearly had a three-point play. Ball fake will send him to the free throw line. Great pivot out of Kildon Johnson. Gafford fighting hard, and there's the value. Get up on the rim. Boom, look at Gafford. Not only was it a quick offensive rebound, it was out of his area. He went from the right side of the rim to the left. Phenomenal talent, the kid from El Dorado. 78 offensive rebounds on the season. Next closest to him coming into the game was 35 for Masabuan. 77 yeah, offensive rebounds coming into the game. Gafford is so good around the rim. Again, he grades out shots three feet and in. He's at 80%. Outside of that three foot, he's at 32%. He is a rim scorer. And Arkansas needs to make sure he gets rim touches right now. There's the presence of Richards. Harris had a lane to the hoop, but he stopped because he realized four was there. Alley oop. Ooh, wow. Oh, wow. Gaffer tried to catch and shoot in the same motion. There's Hero, yeah. and he makes the layup. Tyler Hero's best night as a Wildcat continues. They're going to call a foul on Hagens. It'll result in a couple of free throws. But back to Tyler Hero, as good a three-point shooter is, when he makes his mind up to go yep. and drive, he is effective. He's a complete player. This guy's got real game. There's nothing fake about Tyler Hero. And he continues to limp on that heavily taped right ankle. And this is a guy that early we thought he was just a three-point shooter. No. 
This guy can drive, he can shoot runners, he can guard his tail off. A huge game, huge, 90%. Nine of 10 in the game, five of six and three, and a career high 27. That's a sick night. You still got 410 to go. You cannot leave Tyler Hero if you're Arkansas. Right now, make someone else beat you because Tyler Hero is doing it. And ignoring the pain in yes. his ankle. Just get the sense tomorrow he'll be walking a little gingerly on that right ankle of his. But tonight it's all adrenaline. Wouldn't it be nice to know the feeling of Tyler Hero walking across campus tomorrow? Just one time in your life, what does that feel like? You probably have it a lot. <laughs> People slapping you on the back and I mean, high-fiving you and selfies yeah. with you. Walking in the rut, I get that. <laughs> we do get that. Walk, walking with a rut is like walking with Tyler Hero <laughs> on Kentucky's campus. Here's Hero. <laughs> PJ. Richards had it, lost it. It's going to be Arkansas basketball. Calipari told Laura at halftime, we're going to find out who we are in the second half because we have been punked in our own building. Well, the second half, Cal, your guys have answered the call. They're playing tough. They're playing with desperation and a huge heart out of Tyler Hero. Gymnastics takes over the SEC network every Friday night. This week, it's number 10 Kentucky and 16th ranked Missouri. They're squaring off in Columbia at a special time, 6 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss that. Then 12th ranked Auburn and number eight Alabama from Coleman Coliseum. It's Friday Night Heights. It's also streaming live. Must see TV. Make sure you check them out. Of course, they begin the Friday Night Heights at 6 p.m., guys. Thank you, Laura. Hey, the Kentucky family lost a very valued member when Jim Mazzoni passed away a couple of days ago following a long battle with pancreatic cancer. He worked for over four decades with both the basketball and football stat crews, including up through the game against Kansas at the end of January. Jim Mazzoni is survived by his wife, two children, and seven grandchildren. They leave a seat empty for where Jim Mazzoni would have otherwise been sitting. And on behalf of all of us at ESPN, we extend our deepest sympathies to the Mazzoni and Kentucky families. Last time a Kentucky player went for 30 was last January. Shea Gilgis Alexander against Vanderbilt. We bring that up because Tyler Hero is sitting on 27. And you got to believe he will have opportunities to go over that, whether through free throws or his three point shooting. He has missed only one shot tonight, 9 of 10. Now, where does Arkansas go for the points? Well, they tried to run a back screen action for Daniel Gaffer, but uh, Isaiah Joe did not set a physical screen at all. Kentucky just blew it up and, and beat Gafford to the box. Arkansas has made six, six shots total in the second half. Isaiah Joe, 19 points. He carried them in the first half and he's been eerily quiet in the second half. Arkansas, two of their last 10 from the floor and again, five on the shot clock. Good defense, no foul, but two on the shot clock. It'll stay with Arkansas. Well, now Arkansas's best option is a lob play for Daniel Gafford. If you're Nick Richards, you get into his body. Well done by Nick Richards. He missed, here comes Kentucky. Hagens to the rack. Lead goes to five. Keldon Johnson came down with those hands, and that's going to be a foul nearly every time. Ted Valentine said he checks him with a hip. Boy, Kentucky's defense has really turned it up now. That pressure that Arkansas put on Kentucky in the first half, Kentucky has returned the favor. Jalen Harris drives that ball, and there's, a, yeah, there's, a, there's enough contact there to throw Harris off Ted Valentine. The great angle is that lead official on the baseline to make the call. Arkansas needs every one of these because they are struggling from the field. Only a 69% free throw shooter. Harris misses the first. Isaiah Joe had 16 in the first half. He has three in the second half. And he missed them both. Got to have them both. 
This is typically where Calipari goes to P.J. Washington on that left block. And that's exactly what he did, Ravi, on that possession. That, that is the money spot for Kentucky in SEC, in SEC tournament and NCAAs. You have to respond to P.J. Washington on that left block. Tennessee did not do it in, in Rupp Arena, and they got punked and punished because of it. You have to come with some double and put him in a crowd or it is over. All that hard work that P.J. Washington put in with regards to his body and training. I asked him earlier today, you know, at what point do you realize that your game is not only good in the SEC, but you are better than nearly every other player in the SEC? And he, he went back to a couple of early games, even in that Duke loss, but he said it slowly started to build. When you look around, you realize, I'm better than almost all the dudes in this conference. Yes. You know, and Calipari called him out at one point yep. in that November stretch and said, you want to be good or a dominant player? Because it's up to you. We've done all we've done all we can as a staff to put you in the right spot. Six-point lead is the largest for Kentucky. If Kentucky guards the ball, they're going to guard the three. And they'll be in good shape in this game. Gafford, tough spot. Nick Richards again. That time, yeah. Gafford muscled his way in, and a foul on Nick Richards. Ravi, I'm telling you, three foot and in. I know you think, well, everybody should make three foot shots. Not the case. Not with that type of length around the rim. This kid is dynamic at the three foot and in spot. The first one gets chewed up, but watch Gafford go right back at it. Gets his feet under his shoulders. Doesn't try to jump with his feet spread. Therefore, he was a powerful through the contact jump. A huge put back by Daniel Gafford to keep Arkansas in this thing. 60% free throw shooter, really long on that one. So they've missed three free throws here in the last minute. Yeah, could be for, could very well be and should be a one-point game right now. Now you got P.J. up top between the pipes. Calipari moves him from the left block to the middle part of the floor. Oh, what a shot by Keldon Johnson over Gafford. He started off the second half playing bully ball, and he's finishing the game playing bully ball. He's trying to find contact, Keldon Johnson, and he's doing an unbelievable job of doing it. Arkansas needs points every time down. There's Richards with the body again. Coach Calipari didn't... Keldon Johnson, he actually goes towards red jerseys, knowing that he has the physical strength right there, yes, sir, to go through contact in this game. He's done it time and time again in the second half. Not settling for jump shots, but bringing the fist to the fight. Wow, wow. they missed their last four free wow. throws, and it is killing them. So frustrating for Mike Anderson. You saw him just take a deep exhale. Like, come on, man. Toughness right now. It's the only shot in college ball that you're not guarded. Step up there and make one. It's a 66% free throw shooting team. They are three of seven in the second half. First full court pressure by Arkansas in this game. P.J. isolated at the elbow and let him go. There you go. Did you travel? Yeah, yes, he did. he did. Nice job by Osaboy to move his feet. Calipari went with a middle isolation play. I mean, you can learn so much about a coach the last minute or two of the ball game, who he trusts and what he knows is his best weapon. And right now it's P.J. Washington on the, on the left block or isolated in the middle. But Osaboy with a key defensive play. Feels like a must possession, doesn't it, Ravi? Every, every one of them does for Arkansas. Harris, wide open three, no good. Gafford there twice, three times. He's going to go up again. Oh, Five. what an effort from Daniel Gafford. Four attempts, and Gafford gets the last to go. Wow. He just outworked every dude on the floor. Daniel Gafford. Knowing that you've got to come up with this rebound or the game is over. Daniel Gafford not only got it once, he got it twice. Three times a lady. Well done by Daniel Gafford. Man, is this kid eat up with talent.
He is a rim running, ball screen diving out of, switch out defensively NBA guy waiting to happen. Jimmy, tomorrow, number seven team in the country plays on the SEC Network. It won't be easy for Tennessee. They take on Ole Miss at the Pavilion in Oxford. Seven Eastern, six Central. You can watch it on the ESPN app from anywhere. Is there anything about Tennessee recently during this break we have here that has you concerned about them? They were a national championship type team. Why have they fallen off a little bit? Their inability to guard the ball, Ravi. And Ole Miss is going to test that tomorrow night. Those three guards from Ole Miss can go by you in, in a blink. And Tennessee has got to guard that ball better. And, and Rick Barnes has known it all season long. Every practice I've been at, they start off with guarding the ball. But it hurt them against LSU. It hurt them up here against Kentucky. It could hurt them tomorrow night. It could, it could, it, that could be what keeps Tennessee from winning the national championship. They are, my estimation, solid, if not great, in every other area. Yeah. But if you can't guard the ball now, you're in serious trouble. Remember last year, Grant Williams' back was bothering him, and he wasn't nearly as explosive. Early in the season, Williams was really explosive. Mm -hmm. He got banged around in that Kentucky game. I don't know if he re-aggravated it, but he doesn't look as explosive as he did early in this season. No, he does not. And Jordan Bone has not quite been what he's been the last couple of weeks, but you know, national champions in the past have kind of hit a tough stretch in February and yep. bounced back from it. Tennessee could very well do the same thing. They are, the, they are a real team. Full court press is coming now by Arkansas, and they can really scramble you up. Quickness all over the floor. Mike Anderson takes Gafford out for this defensive possession. And I'd get after the ball right now. I, I would not back it up. I would get after that ball. Tyler Hero with 27 points. Had that ball knocked away. Get after that ball. Boy, good hands by Joe. Wasn't he got lower than Hero was. Almost got him one. Eight on the shot clock. Don't leave Hero. Higgins for three. Nick Richards battles. I don't know what the call was. They can go look at it. I think that's what they're going to go do. This is a huge call here as the officials go to the monitor. Well, Nick Richards all alone. It's a one-handed rebound that Laura listened to in the huddle back in the first half. It will not have Calipari pleased. Nick Richards, instead of two hands, goes after it with one. And Osa Boyne comes in from behind. But did he hit Richards' hand or yeah. did he hit the ball? Because clearly Osa Boyan caused the ball to go out of bounds. Right. But did his hand hit the ball or yeah. hit Richards' hand? Yeah. To me, if he hit Richards' hand, it goes off of Richards. Is that how you're seeing it? That, well, that's the question. Richards' hand is in front. And then Austin Boyan may get the top of the ball and send it out. Clearly, his swinging of the arm caused the ball to go out of bounds. And I sense that that would be off Arkansas. Yeah, because the momentum of Richard's hand was, was not forcing the ball out of bounds. It was Osa Boyan. And it's a huge call here. Yeah, they're in collaboration with the folks and back in Birmingham. It, Going to stay with Kentucky, correct? Yes, it is. At least that was the indication. What have you learned about Kentucky here before the inbounds? And given they were down 39-28, they're not playing with Reed Travis tonight. They got some fight in them. I mean, I knew they did, but I think their fight went to another level because they were in a double-digit deficit without their anchor on the inside. Against a hard, fighting, scrapping bunch of hogs from Fayetteville tonight. By the way, the foul on P.J. Washington. And Ravi, I learned, I, well, I didn't learn. I just reemphasized. They, they got a dude in Tyler Hero. Mm -hmm. P.J. Washington will most likely be the SEC Player of the Year. This, to me, may be their most important guy if they win a national championship because he does everything that you want as a coach. He works his butt off, he knocks down threes, he drives it, he has runners, and he is a gambler defensively that comes up with big plays at the right time. P.J. agree for two, yes I do. From the free throw line, he knocks down a big one. Couldn't agree more, I thought Hero tonight was far more reactionary than he was a thinking man out uh -huh. there. He got the ball and shot it. You know, brain was off almost, and he got it and shot it. Yep. Never thought about it too much. 27 points for Tyler Hero. 
he, he, he puts in the work, man. That free throw number is hard to overcome on the road. This is that, so it's a four-point game with 23 in the game. Plenty of time. Find, find Gafford. Find Gafford. Dive out of it, Tim. Isaiah Joe, they kick it out to Harris. Jones, he fires a three. Got it! Big three for Jones. One-point game, nine seconds to go. Mason Jones. Arkansas moves Gafford out on the floor as a ball screener. And what that does for you, it allows you to drive the ball some without help defense built in. And Mason Jones with a little bit of a lean back, just enough of a lean back to get it off over the outstretched arms of Keldon Johnson. And now that full court pressure by Arkansas is going to come. Arkansas has time to try to get a steal on the out of bounds. They can even take a second or two and try to get one out of a trap. But then the foul is going to have to come. So important for Kentucky to be strong with the ball. Don't look for a call. Arkansas is a high contact team that has played with extremely hot hands in this ball game. They're yeah. capable of a steal. SEC now coming up next. LSU did get another win tonight, and they did it without Tremont Waters again. Balance scoring for the Tigers. Nas Reed had 18 in that one. Smart 17. He's been terrific with Waters out. So to keep pace with LSU, Kentucky needs to hold on here as LSU improves to 13 and 2 in the conference. John Calipari sees the press alignment by Mike Anderson and the key here is to get the dadgum ball in. That, that, that's the bottom line. If you get it in, then probably that's a huge step to try to finish this thing off. Arkansas looked to me like that time, Ravi. They didn't have a guy on the ball. They kind of backed him off trying to play center fielder. Yeah. So if you're Kentucky now, in that timeout, you have to tell your guards, you're not going to get open on your first cut. This has to be a one cut, two cut, maybe a three cut to get open. So you look at Hero and you look at guys that you trust that want the ball. Right. I would think Tyler Hero would be the guy. He has a bad ankle. Think about it. I have a guy in my huddle with a bad ankle, and I look at you and I say, Tyler, go get open. Make that third cut. That's the type of attitude you have to have as a coach with your guys, understanding the urgency to get this ball in. Arkansas is going to give you nothing. If you stand and watch, we're in trouble. If you make a third cut, we're going to get our win and get out of here. Hero has missed just one shot tonight. He is 9 of 10 from the floor. He's made all four of his free throw attempts. The bigger picture for Arkansas on the road at Kentucky, trailing by one with nine to go when you just move ahead a couple of weeks to the SEC tournament. When you have a guy like Joe shooting from the outside and Gafford from the inside, you realize that that's a team that can do some damage in the SEC tournament. They they are not a four and nine team when no. they're playing their best. Absolutely. They, they won at LSU. I told Mark Packer today on Sirius Radio, we need to start talking about LSU as a final four threat because yeah. they are they are that good. Yep. And here's what I'm talking about. You're going to have to make two cuts if you're a Kentucky player. It's Hero, Quickly, and Keldon Johnson that should be the cutters. P.J. is more of a post-up type guy. Cut, cut. There's the guy. There's the guy that you wanted to have it, and you went and got it. That, that's what I thought Calipari would do. Not the quickest guy on the floor, but Calipari called the number of the guy that so far has shown the most fight. And watch Tyler Hero. Cut, cut again. Wide open. How about the foul there, though? Why are we waiting? Yeah, they, why, yes. they took four seconds yeah, off the right. clock. You got to get him right then and there. That was crucial. Arkansas with no timeouts, so they're going to have to get this thing and go. One of the best free throw shooters in the country. If he makes both, Arkansas will have a chance to tie with a three. 28 points for Tyler Hero tonight, adding to his career high. Your Calipari, you're thinking, do I call a timeout? Knowing that Mike Anderson doesn't have one, why, why would you do that and let Arkansas talk about it? But he's going to do it. He is. He's going to give Mike Anderson a chance to talk about this three, this five seconds to go. That's an interesting call by John Calipari. But he doesn't want to leave anything to chance for the young team. Tyler Hero comes out of the halftime. John Calipari tells Laura, we don't have Travis. Tyler Hero's hurt. What do you mean Tyler Hero's hurt? Tyler Hero, good. I'm the man. He's got 17 in the second half on what was diagnosed as a strained ankle. Strained. Points. 
Whereas that staff right now for Kentucky, you're talking about, do we even let them get off a three? Now that's the conversation. Those are the type of decisions you make in the non-pressure time of the year. What do you do? You foul here? You don't, you know, well, it depends on where, the, where, where, the, where Arkansas catches the ball. If they catch it going away from the basket and they put the ball down, yes. And Arkansas up against a lot of link. Can Arkansas get Isaiah Joe free? He's going to start right here and maybe make a circle cut and go. There's the circle cut. They got him. Uh, Tyler Hero tried to foul. There's a foul. Yep. There you go. That's the right call. The only thing, the only thing fouling like this does, it brings losing into the equation. Arkansas makes the first one. They miss the second one, tip it out, and knock down a three. You can lose the game. That's the only thing that you do bring to the table. Highly unlikely, but you do bring that to the table. I saw it happen years ago in the SEC tournament. Rick Stansberry team did it for Mississippi State. What are you doing here? A 3.2. Are you intentionally missing this, or are you making it and fouling? I, 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 would, I would intentionally miss it because you're not going to have enough. It's a gut call. You could go either way. You, you can make it and try to and, and try to get the turnover, or you can miss it and get the tip out. There it is. Miss it. No, nope. got to hit the rim. rim. That's yeah. the prize. Jalen Harris has to know that he's an upperclassman guard. I think he know it. I think he knew it. I think yeah. he just missed it. You I have. Think you, I think you go high arcing shot there because yes. you got Gafford. Let that ball get up in yeah, the air yeah. off the rim. You have to and let him go get yes. it. You have to. You shoot it. And you look at the right side of the rim, and you just think, I'm just hitting the right side of the rim. But you have to practice it. If they can get it in the hands of Hero, he can match Gilgis Alexander, who was the last guy to score 30. That was a bad pass. Ooh. Whose ball is it? Ooh, it's going to be Arkansas. They're going to they probably look go and look at it. Jones is telling the officials, go check the monitor on that. That was not a good pass. And Hero was open. Ravi, did, 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 the, did the Kentucky player move on the baseline? Did he run? Did he step? Did he, move? he took a step towards him? I don't know if he moved his feet. Arkansas had this same thing happen to them at Texas Tech when Texas Tech out of bounds ran with the ball. Hey, that, wow. that, that, that may be an off the Keldon elbow. Does Ashton Hagen's move at all? He has a three-foot box he can step. Man, I, he, I think he stepped out of that three-foot box. There's an imaginary three-foot box that he has to stand in. And I'm not so sure Ashton Hagen didn't step out of it. Yeah, that may be, and that also may be off the right arm here of Keldon Johnson. Watch right there. Does that elbow push the ball out? Hard to see from that angle. The initial call was off of Arkansas, yes. correct? Yep. So now they have to see the evidence to overrule it. I, I, I think the officials missed Ashton Hagen stepping out of that imaginary box. It's, it's three feet. And Mike Anderson was right on top of it. It, it was awfully close. Same scenario that happened to Arkansas and Lubbock. They didn't get the call down there as well. The Brian O'Connell was the baseline official. Yep. It didn't appear as if he was looking down at the feet of Ashton Hagens. It did not. On the inbounds. Every official will tell you the most difficult thing to get right in college ball is who that out of bounds off of. It just happened so quickly. It's impossible to see that right arm of Kelton Johnson and whether that actually had the ball roll off it or not. Similar to the last close call on the out of bounds play that went the way of Kentucky, Arkansas caused the ball to go out of bounds. The question was, did it deflect off Kentucky? And it's Kentucky basketball. Mike Anderson is not going to be happy. He's more upset about what he thought was a baseline out of bounds under violation. Ted Valentine taps him on the backside to try to calm him down. Tremendous amount of fight out of Arkansas for 40 minutes in this ball game. They may not get the win, but they have nothing at all to hang their head about on the way back to Fayetteville. Like he still has to get it in with one timeout left and frozen on that baseline. Gafford will be on the inbounder. Not going to get it. 
Look at this. Look at quickly come and get it, and they got a huge break as that ball was thrown to no one. Calipari looking at P.J. Washington, wondering who was that too. Kentucky has the floor really crowded in their press breaker. I, I don't know who was guarding quickly. But man, if he had been on the front side of quickly, a steal was waiting to happen. Quickly's out there around the timeline. As he comes up into the play right here, watch. Whether they're going to add any time to the clock. You saw Coach Calipari tell PJ, rather than throw it that way, we have a timeout. Use the timeout. Yeah. And the execution of Kentucky in the last two seconds. Questionable. Iffy. Iffy. Teachable moment. Shaky. <laughs> and yet you had one guy making two cuts and three guys that were outstanding. Outstanding in terms of outstanding on the court, watching one guy try to get open. Not all guys have to be cutting. <laughs> Not one word outstanding. Yeah. No. Outstanding. Outstanding <laughs> on the court watching, saying, Tyler, go get open. And that's not a good press breaker. Goes back to that hope is not a good plan, right. hoping that Hero gets open. Well, if Kentucky wins, Calipari is going to know that he'll be very pleased with the fight back effort by his young team in the second half. Because Arkansas really pushed them for 15 rounds in this game. And head coach Mike Anderson is running warm right now still for Arkansas on that inbounds play. So they add point six to make it one three quickly is old for one from the free throw line. He makes both and obviously the game is over. free throw and Kentucky will keep pace with LSU and set up a showdown on Saturday with Tennessee. There it is. That's it. That's the game for yep. Kentucky. 70 to 66 the final for Coach Calipari and the Wildcats. And a big time comeback in the second half. Well, was the guy with the bum ankle, Tyler Hero. Talked about how far your ankle is from your heart. It's a long ways with Tyler Hero. That dude is a baller. He's a fighter. He's tough as nails. And he's got a lot of game. And Kentucky needed every bit of it tonight from Tyler Hero. Gafford was terrific. Didn't get enough touches, but when he did, he was a monster around the rim. And there it is. LSU, Kentucky, Tennessee still straining to get to that finish line first. What a huge game tomorrow night, Jimmy. Tennessee at Ole Miss. The pavilion sold out. Ole Miss has two chances here, Wednesday, and then they get a game against Kentucky uh, next Tuesday. So two huge exams for Ole Miss for a team that's trying desperately to hold on to the fourth spot, which will get you the double bye in the SEC tournament. Ravi, those top three teams are their, their final four threats, all three of them. All right, let's go to Laura with Tyler Hero and his ankle. We do have Tyler Hero and his <laughs> ankle. First of all, how does your right ankle feel? Uh, it was like my Achilles, I think, but uh, I didn't think I was going to play, be able to play in the second half, but uh, I put some tape on it, so it's feeling good. Now I'll just ice it after. Okay, you literally couldn't miss a shot in the second half, so how did you work through that pain and bring that fight to this team? Uh, we just had to win. We knew no matter how ugly it was, we just had to fight at the end in the second half, come back and get a W. Coach Cal said at halftime that he thought Arkansas wanted it more than you guys wanted it. How did you take that to heart as you came out in the second half? Uh, we know that's not us. You know, we take pride in defense and working, working hard as a team. And you know, we felt like you know, coming out in the second half, we had to you know work harder than them. And no matter what, we had to get the W. There was a moment late in this game when you made a free throw and you said something. It looks like I'm the man. What was that moment like for you, and why did you say that? Uh, I know the, uh, one of the kids on Arkansas. And we were just talking. He said I should miss one for him, but I, I knew I was going to make both. 
Where is that confidence coming from for you, both on the offensive side and defensive side? Uh, you know, just my teammates, they put, you know, confidence and trust into me, and then, you know, I just put the work in, and I feel like I'm built for this. Your pregame routine is really important to you. Pregame, you couldn't miss a shot either. When you have that type of success pregame with your routine, do you just know it's going to be this good in-game? Uh, yeah, I felt good all, all day. Um, you know, my teammates put me in good, you know, good uh, spots to make plays, and, you know, they helped me a lot, so I appreciate them. Thanks so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Ravi, so it's not like BP for Tyler Hero. Right. He has a great pregame. He's good in the game. He did not miss a shot. Or I'm telling you, 28 and 27 went in, and he continued that through the game in which he missed one field goal attempt. He was 9 of 10. Phenomenal effort. Kentucky keeps pace. Big Blue Nation goes home happy tonight. Not their best effort, but it's a win, 70-66. With Laura and Jimmy Dykes, Carl Ravage, back to our SEC studios. Survive in advance. That's what Kentucky.